of a face-to-face -face sort of thing um, that I'm experimenting with, that we call the Gaia dance, which involves um, blending our consciousness together on the subtle levels and our collective prayer and collective intention, but then activating that through ecstatic dance and rhythmic dance in a kind of new ceremonial dance format that gives it an extra kick. <laughs> That's really fun. Um, and we're going to do a modified version of that at the end of the um, post-conference workshop, if you want to have a taste of that. Um, and my wife and I are going to travel around the country next year on a, a Heal US tour. We're going to be bringing this Gaia dance to various places as a way of doing what we can to uplift the energy there and to bring you know, a sense of healing and bridging at this, um, at this time. I love both of those answers. And uh, I also want to thank you, Floyd, for calling me on my millennial comment. Um, so big ho'oponopono there. Because it wasn't meant to be divisive at all. I, I work with a group of millennials, and they are so turned on. They may not know about this. They may not know about the power of their own heart. So what I meant to say was that, you know, normally in a conversation, if you're talking about your, inter your, your connectedness, you're talking about your wireless devices, not your hearts. But they are really turned on, and I, I'm going to take this opportunity to say that when I talk to them, I say that I believe that there's really only one generation on the planet right now. And it's the generation that's moving through this evolutionary window. And that's actually a really healing message, including for millennials, because... Some of them, without placing a value judgment on this, think that the world is screwed up because of the previous generations. So, <clears throat> that's a whole other topic. But what I would like to say in answer to the question is, if we look at this image again and then consider that as an empowered aggregate, what we're really doing is it's the electromagnetic field of humanity interacting with the electromagnetic field of the planet. And what is the potential of that if the electromagnetics are coherent and imbued with love and compassion and all of the things that we're talking about? So I've worked with David over the years trying to, to create this effect through mass meditations. There are lots of groups doing mass prayers, trying to do the same thing. And Right now, it's just such an amazing moment. We're all feeling it here at IONS. We're all feeling it at this conference. We're feeling it among all of you. And it's like a dream come true right now for me in a lot of ways, seeing what's happening next. Because in the work that I've done with David, there's been one piece missing. And that is the ability to actually talk about coherence as a real thing that has a real effect in the world. And now the Global Coherence Initiative, which also has a series of magnetometers uh, implanted around the world, one of my greatest joys has been to help bury those systems. And uh, Global Consciousness Project is a partner. We work together. We install a random number generator with every magnetometer. Um, but now that we have an app, a mobile app, which is very complementary to what Adam is creating, we can invite people to come in and see the empowered aggregate that is showing up to not just meditate, but to create a coherent field together. And there is a slight difference, and it's just a difference of awareness, really, and perhaps practice. So this is happening. We're actually calling it Global Coherence Day now. And it's not just the Global Coherence Initiative, but it's also IONS community groups, Unify, who Roger mentioned, which is huge in the world of global meditation, a Resonance Science Foundation, which is the Sim Harriman's organization, Unity Earth, which is trying to bring the Earth together for very similar purposes, and there are several others. Um, but Please, if you're interested, just take a picture of that screenshot because the more people that we have
And there's going to be information, there's a video coming out that Unify is doing, and if you've ever seen the Unify videos, you know they're amazing. That's explaining coherence, and um, they have a Facebook page, so if you're interested, please consider joining us. That's one very concrete thing you can do. How long is the meditation? How long is the meditation? It's not on there. <laughs> it's not, I mean, maybe 10 minutes? 11 minutes, if that makes sense. It was originally 11-11. Adams? I think a good scientist is concerned not just with finding the right answer, but also with asking the right question. Uh, and uh, Aristotle was famous for trying to get his students to ask the right question, the question of why, because he felt that you couldn't really understand any system or anything or what to do about it unless you understood its why, meaning its purpose. So I mean, perhaps the question about, you know, so what, what to do about this, is rooted in the question of what is the purpose of collective consciousness to the extent that you know, we believe that it's real. Um, I, I think one of the challenges of asking what is the purpose of collective consciousness or, or seeing it or researching it as humans is that it's very difficult to see yourself in a wider whole horizontally. Uh, it's hard to see yourself as part of something and understand it. Uh, but we can look at dimensions or levels below us and see collective consciousness systems and we can see the why and the purpose. For example, um, you could look at a, a sample of soil and see uh, microbacteria and they're all independent microbacteria, but indeed the purpose is, their purpose is uh, to break down the soil and contribute to this ecology which is necessary for the growth of and survival of organisms on the planet. Um, even in our own bodies, we have this ecosystem of bacteria. Um, and you know, if you were to somehow interview uh, uh, one of the gut microbiomes in your uh, in your body and say, "What is your purpose?" Um, who knows what the answer would be? Maybe, do we have any gut psychologists? <laughs> Bruce Damer. <laughs> um, and so. The idea would be that we don't necessarily, the, the gut bacteria don't necessarily know that they are part of a, a wider collective, but they have a really deep and amazing purpose, which they couldn't even possibly imagine, which is to keep alive our bodies with all of our, you know, everything that makes us who we are. And so, you know, it's very challenging to, uh, to sort of answer this question about what is the purpose of, of human collective consciousness, but uh, as a, Perhaps I can leave you with a bit of a, something prescriptive to consider. Uh, nature is very good at rewarding participants of a system that are net value contributors. And it's very good at sidelining participants of a system that are net value leeches. So whoever you are and whatever you do and whichever communities you belong to, be a net value contributor. Um, what was the other thing, a net value leech? <laughs> oh, well, nature has a way of sidelining the leeches and rewarding the contributors. <laughs> don't uh, be a net value leech. Yeah, don't, don't be that. <laughs> um, because once you do that, you're, you're operating in this service to others mode, and that's where the, the real magic happens. You know, any, any good sage will tell you that. So in your lives, be a net value contributor, and if you do that, you'll have the awesome power of teleology, of purpose and meaning, belonging to a higher group behind you. You'll have it as the wind in your sails. Beautiful. As the faith practitioner up here, I want to answer the question too. Um, almost across all faith traditions, um, there are three things that, well, at least two things that always happen. One is music and the other is prayer. Uh, the prayer part and the meditation part, I think in some sense, uh, we all understand and we have been concentrating on it. But it's the music part mm -hmm. that I want to invite you to do. Because the prayer is the hope and the, the music is joy. Decide to be joyful. Smile. Change is something to be not the person that reflects the temperature in the room, right? But be the thermostat. <laughs> Decide that when I come to the room, no matter what is happening, right, I will change it 
And I was just at a conference, um, and one of the sub-conferences as the largest gathering of people of faith who were uh, 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 dark-skinned and who were transgender. There is no other population in the world that is under more persecution than that. And I experienced the most amount of joy I've had in a long time. It was a three-day party. <laughs> and so I asked Dee Dee Chambly, who is the woman who was a former sex worker up in prison, and if you were, if you now take your forms and any form that doesn't ask you your gender, that's her. Any, any reason, any, uh, most of the, the things that are happening in, the, uh, in, in policing that are no longer to transgender throwing in jail in their, in their own, that's all Dee Dee. So I said, Dee Dee, how did you get to that point? And she said, honey, when I decide to be joyful, everybody else me. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, that's what every practitioner of faith understands. That you can have all the hope and the prayer and the aspiration, but there is also something wonderful in the human spirit when we decide that the circumstances are not the reality. Yes. The reality is how we deal with the circumstances. So be joyful. Decide to change the atmosphere. See. We have a few seconds, so thank you so much. I just want to say a shout out to Roger, who has a wonderful book. That's another thing I want to recommend to people who would be drawn to reading about this. It's called Connected, and in it he says, we may not have all the answers, but we have enough evidence now to proceed and do what we think is right in the direction that the evidence is pointing. So I just wanted to thank shout out to Roger. I want to add something to uh, the theme Adam was talking about. It. The value added. <laughs> Draw comic strips for us, will ya? <laughs> <laughs> John Pollock said, you know, that's the way to penetrate the broad consciousness. Make it fun, make it joyful, make it funny even. Thank you very much Thank for the time.